From a maximum of 900 people responding to the massive landslide in Itogon, Benguet, the national government is limiting people in the site to 30 rescuers. Brigadier General Leopoldo Imbang confirms to Rappler the OCD made the decision for the safety of rescuers. It has been raining for the past two days in Itogon, and the OCD is worried about another fatal landslide. The first massive landslide happened Saturday morning, September 15, triggered by Typhoon Ompong or Mangkut. Meantime, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council has submitted a proposal to President Rodrigo Duterte for the declaration of a state of calamity in typhoon-affected areas. This will include the Ilocos region, Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon, and the Cordillera Administrative Region. Follow Rappler for updates. The family of the late statesman Jose Diocno on Thursday, September 21, slams the distortion of history of former Senators Bongbong Marcos and Juan Ponce Enrile. Enrile claims during martial law, no one was arrested for political or religious beliefs and that the detainees at the time were merely inconvenienced for a while, then later released. The claims were made in an interview posted on Marcos's social media accounts. The Jokno family calls the claims a pathetic attempt at rewriting our history. The family says thousands of claimants, human rights victims of the Marcos regime, belie and realize assertion. The family adds, Are we now to take torture, forced disappearance, and the loss of life as forms of inconvenience and really serve as the defense minister under the Marcos regime? The family also contests and realize claim that Jokno didn't want to be released from detention. Jokno was detained for two years without being charged. The family said Jokno objected to the terms of the pledge, which expressed loyalty to the Marcos regime. I'm Jose Jokno. We will be free. And even if we have to wade through blood and fire, we will sing our own songs. Amnesty International says 34,000 were tortured and 3,240 were killed during martial law from 1972 to 1981. Meantime, former President Noynoy Aquino says Enrile's old age can't be used as an excuse for people to believe his desired revision of the truth. It's amazing that it's not to Enrile, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a part of Para maniwala tayo sa gusto niya pagbabago ng katotohanan. Former Senate President and Consultative Committee Member Nene Pimentel says Communications Assistant Secretary Moka Uson should stick to entertainment instead of tackling federalism. Assistant Secretary Moka, uh, dapat siguro nandun siya sa entertainment lang. Huwag naman siya sasali dito sa mga may issue na Mukhang hindi naman niya naintindihan. Lalong magkakagulo ang pag-isip ng taong bayan kung sa haluan mo, uh, by statements coming from uh, a, an assistant secretary in government, occupying a government position, paid for by the people. So, hindi ganong maganda siguro. So, doon na lang siya sa saya, okay lang. Pro Duterte blogger Drew Olivar performed a lewd federalism jingle with Uson's encouragement on her Facebook post. In a message, Uson says she respects Pimentel's views. She says, I respect the opinion of Sir Nene. I am proud to be a former entertainer, but I hope he doesn't belittle the livelihood of dancing. Grab Philippines announces it has lowered its surge pricing cap to help riders cope with the return of its 2 peso per minute travel charge. The ride hailing firm says it adjusted the surge pricing cap to times 1.6 from the usual times 2. Surge pricing is computed based on the time covered and distance traveled in a trip, excluding the base fare. The LTFRB says it allowed the 2 peso per minute travel charge to maintain the viability of transport network companies. Mm-hmm. 